At the end of September 2017, I started my coaching business, The Savvy Corner. Here I am four years later with a few thoughts about what I've learned in these four years and an exciting announcement. Hello friends and welcome or welcome back to the channel. I should also welcome myself back. I've taken a break from YouTube to manage and enjoy some things that have happened in my personal life and it felt good to take a proper break. It offered me the rests I needed, but also an opportunity to reflect on this channel and my business as a whole and decide where I want to take them both. It is part of this strategy that I want to share with you in today's video and I will do so in the second part of it. Before I do that though, I want to share with you a few thoughts about what it's like to run a coaching business. As you can see from the title, at the end of this month, I'm celebrating my fourth business anniversary. I'm not even sure how I feel about that. Four years doesn't seem like a very long time, but at the same time, I feel like I've been doing this for ages now. I wasn't going to do a video about it, but the more I look back, the more I realize that my memories are starting to fade a little. For example, my first collaboration with the Association for Coaching happened in 2019. In my mind, it was in 2020, but that's not true and someone had to point that out to me. So I'm filming this for your benefit, but also for mine. So I can come back to these videos and see exactly where I was, how I felt and what I had learned in my business over the years. Okay, let's not make this introduction too long. Here are three things I want to share as a result of being a coaching business owner for four years. I'll try and keep it brief. Number one, it takes time to learn how to be a true business owner. I believe I said this before on my channel, but it took me more than one year to get to grips with it. And every time my business reaches a new level, whether financially or otherwise, I need to spend some time and do some mindset work around my responsibilities as a business owner. That mostly includes strategic thinking and making important decisions that will affect the future of my business. Number two, your goals and aspirations will change and as a consequence, so will your business. If you've been following me for a while, you know that about 18 months ago, I changed the focus of my business and now I don't do personal finance coaching anymore, but I work with coaches to help them build financially viable coaching businesses. This business change came as a result of my own preferences and aspirations as a coach and as a professional. If that is happening to you too, don't fight it like I did. This change would have happened a lot sooner if I didn't fight against it for so long. If your intuition is telling you something needs to change, listen to it and see if there are reasonable steps that you can take to make this change. I'm not encouraging you to go after every shiny object that comes your way. I am talking about fundamental changes here that will have a huge impact on your business like a change of business model or a complete change of your coaching niche and target market. I was so hung up on my plan and reaching some milestones I had set for myself in 2017 that I forgot to take a coaching approach and listen to the voice within. So keep an open mind and always tap into your inner wisdom. Speaking of wisdom, I don't remember where I first read this phrase, but it stuck with me. It says something like this. Everything you have ever wanted is on the other side of fear. And this is so powerful and so true. I've been working a lot more on my spiritual side in the last 18 months, and I got to realize how debilitating negative emotions can be and opportunity thieves. It's the fear of being rejected that prevents us from even asking. It's the fear of looking ridiculous that stops us from trying, the fear of making a mistake that keeps us still. I learned to be a lot more open about feeling negative emotion, being with that emotion, realizing that it won't kill me and then releasing my need, the need of my ego to have everything be perfect. As a result of that, I've gotten so many great opportunities and I also feel much more at ease with where my business is, where it's going and the pace of my progress. Of course, there is still so much to be learned and I don't pretend to be the finished product. In fact, I will never be and that's okay. 
I'm okay with a lifetime of learning and discovering. And that is actually one of the things that I enjoy the most about business life. Yes, learning can be uncomfortable, but the end result is worth more than avoiding the discomfort, for me at least. Okay, those were the three things I wanted to share on my fourth business anniversary. Now let's move on to the announcement I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Before we do that though, if you're getting value from the video so far, I would appreciate it if you gave it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing. If you're inclined to leave a comment, that would make my day. It really helps to support the channel and I thank you in advance if you do. So what's the big announcement? Are you ready? I have decided to write a book. On the 8th of March this year, which is International Women's Day, I had this thought while I was meditating. And the thought was, there is a book inside of you and it needs to get out into the world. Even thinking about it now gives me the chills. It was completely surreal as if someone else was in the room with me and they told me I needed to write a book. I smiled and I didn't give it too much thought in the moment. My first reaction was something like, well, we probably all have a book inside ourselves, so yeah, there is a book in me. But in the weeks and months after I had this voice telling me to write a book, all I could see around me was book related. I've had colleagues who released books and invited me to be part of their launches. I've started getting ads for courses on how to write a book. The videos suggested to me on YouTube were about becoming an author and publishing your book, etc. So, I decided to entertain the idea at least and see where my reflections would take me. First of all, I realized that given how many articles and videos I created, how many courses I delivered and the experience I have working with coaches to help them build their businesses, there is at least one book in me, if not more. Okay, interesting I thought, but that doesn't mean I need to write a book. However, I started my business to make an impact. But not everyone can afford or is ready to work with me one-to-one. -one. Releasing a book would definitely increase my impact and allow coaches to apply the concepts I teach to their coaching businesses for a tenner, which is basically how much a book costs these days. Also, there is something about leaving a legacy that I associate with writing a book. I'm kind of doing this here on YouTube but it's on rented land. If YouTube ever goes bust or decides to close its doors or kick me from the platform, that's it. My videos will be gone too. While a book will almost always be in existence. Even if someone reads it and then donates it to a charity or to their local library or gifts it to someone else, it will still be there for people to read and hopefully learn something from. Anyway, long story short, after entertaining the idea, I started to believe that I could and should write a book. This realization didn't come without doubts and fears and going back and forth. Why do you think I'm filming this video in September, more than six months after I first had this thought of writing a book? But I won't go into that in this video. Perhaps I can film some more about the whole process from idea to finished book, let me know if you would be interested in that. So I decided to write a book on the subject of building a coaching business. Let's talk a little bit about the logistics of it. I've given myself a deadline of the 27th of September, 2022. And by that time I should have the book written and published. I want to give myself an entire year for the process. One, because I don't want to overwhelm myself and two, because I want to take my time and write an awesome book. I'm not saying it will take me one year exactly, but I don't want it to take longer than that. Also, September 2022 marks my fifth business anniversary, and I think it would be so cool to have a book published before I hit that milestone. At the moment, I'm considering self-publishing, but I'm not discounting the idea of a hybrid publishing model. We'll see. That is something for me to think about in more detail later on. For now though, the priority is actually writing the book. And the way I intend to do that is by allocating two hours each day, four times a week for writing and researching. That is eight hours a week. And I'll do that until I have the first draft ready. After that, 
I'll spend some time editing it myself before I get a professional editor involved. Then I'll need to worry about the cover, the blurb and other related things. But I want to take it one step at a time. If you want me to film some videos with my progress, the different stages of writing a book and the things that I'm learning in the process, please let me know and I would be happy to do it and to share what I am learning in this process. So there it is, my big exciting announcement uh, on my fourth business anniversary. I'm writing a book for coaches to help them build their coaching businesses and I'm excited to reveal more to you as I go along in this journey. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Alisa and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.